Episode 13, season finale, Stars and Stripe, part two. And this was both enjoyable and weird and frustrating <laughs> at the same time. But we'll get into all the reasons why. So let's just uh, let's just get right into this. So the episode starts. It actually takes us um, three minutes before. Because the last time we saw that Courtney was about to get attacked by Pat because Pat just got um, mind controlled by um, by the brain machine. But it takes us three minutes before that. We're on the football. We're on the football field, and while we're on the football field, the 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 fiddler's son, he you know after taking the advice of his mom, he took his tuba and he busted it over this bully's face. So the kid's bleeding and everything. And then you know like the um, one of the teachers came over and he was just like, "Why did you do that?" He was like, "Cause my mom told me to." And then he was just like, "Well, let's go see about this. You know, and go talk to your mom." And I'm just like, "Do we not know his mom is dead?" <laughs> because last night, you know, Tigress and um, Sportsmaster they went after you know Courtney's family, and you know the the fiddler she showed up for the cleanup or whatever. And then because she was talking that ish. Tigress and Sportsmaster killed her. So that was last night. This is now a whole new day and nobody's like he didn't even be like, hey, my mom's not here this morning. <laughs> so that was uh, that was very weird. So then the uh, the satellite, the satellite, the mind controlling satellite, you know, comes out of the football field. And then, you know, that's when it, it mind controls like all the grownups all over the like all over the city. Uh, we did get a cameo because um, it showed us it showed us like basically like all throughout the town, all the grownups that were that were being mind controlled. And like the, the gambler said, he said that the 30 minute countdown means that once the countdown reaches zero, once the 30 minutes go to zero, that the brain control will be permanent. And anybody that resists, like if anybody tries to like mentally resist, it'll kill them. Like it'll kill them. Like the strain of trying to resist the whole process will end up killing them. So, um, so we're in the city, like they're showing like different people. There are kids there that's like, oh, you know, like what's wrong with my mom? What's wrong with my dad? One girl in particular, it was like this little girl who was just like, oh, but my daddy, there's something wrong with my daddy. And I'm, and when I saw her, I was just like, is that Tony Stark's daughter? <laughs> like, like I, I, you know, I, I have to look it up, but I believe that was the girl who played Tony Stark's daughter in Avengers Endgame. She even had like the, um, like the, 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 the like the little like lisp speech impediment lisp thing, you know, when she, uh, when she spoke and she looked like she, I mean, obviously she's a little older now because, you know, because of the time and when things get shot, but I was just like, yeah, that's Tony Stark's daughter. So, <laughs> you know, so kudos to her for getting the superhero money. So then, um, you know, brain, not brainwave, um, the ice man, um, icicle, you know, he's walking around the city and then, you know, like, um, I believe her, um, Tony Stark's daughter's name was Morgan. We'll just call her Morgan. So Morgan stops him and then she's like, what's wrong with my daddy? And then he was just like, you know, he was like, you know, don't worry. Like, you know, once this is old, once your dad snaps out of it, he'll be a better person. He'll be a good person. And then she was just like, but my dad's already a good person. I'm like, well, we actually don't know that. But <laughs> he's just like, yeah, don't worry about it. You know, so he's just strolling around like, like it's all, like it's all good. So, so now back in the tunnels, because remember, um, Beth is with Barbara. Barbara just got mind controlled. Um, Shining Knight is with um, Wildcat and Our Man, and he just got mind controlled. And Courtney is with Pat, and you know Pat's taking a swing at her. So right before, right before Pat basically like you know like like busts her in the chops, um, Courtney hits him with the. She actually called him Dad, which was like which was very funny. And then when she called him Dad, like. The mind, like as powerful as the brainwave mind control is, <laughs> even Pat was just like, hold up, like you just called me the D word, like nah, because you've been talking trash to me like the whole season, you know. So then Pat kind of stopped for a little bit, and then you know Courtney gave him the speech. She was just like, you know, you've been there for me since day one, you know. And then she was just like, you know, like I need you, you know, like I love you, blah blah blah. And then now he's kind of like fighting with the brain control. He's fighting with the mind control, but like um like homeboy said, like the gambler said. If you try to resist the re like the strain from resisting will eventually kill you. So then you know so the Yolanda, Yolanda and um and and our and Rick they're trying to snap the shining the shining night out of it. And then Beth you know Beth she's you know she's she's at the she's at the school you know or a Barbara's um Barbara's job or whatever. And she's talking to Chuck. And then Chuck was just like, listen, you know 
it's possible for us to snap them out of it. But the problem is that the gambler has his hooks in like like too much as far as like you know as far as like the feed is concerned. And then the gambler's still like in the goggles. He's still popping up like you can't do nothing to me, girl. And I'm just like, damn. <laughs> so he's listening. Like the funny thing is. The whole time Beth, Chuck, and the gambler are doing whatever it is they're doing, they're listening to each other the entire time. And I'm just like, so we just going to let each other know the plans. Like, <laughs> that's what, like, that's what we're doing. So um, Beth was the one who ended up figuring out because she was just like, you know, when I was in the tunnels, she said that I couldn't hear anybody like the um, like the feed was interrupted. But she said, but for some reason, I can hear the gambler. I can hear Courtney. I can hear Yolanda. I can hear Rick. So... She was just like, you know, they must have machines downstairs, like in the tunnels that can block the brainwave signal. But because they knew we were going down there to stop them, they, you know, they turned the blockers off. So all we got to do is turn the blockers back on. And then, but Chuck was just like, well, there's no way we can turn the blockers back on because the gambler, you know, like he's on it. And then Beth was just like, all right, well, let's divert his attention somewhere else. So she had Chuck hack into all of his bank accounts because the gambler is rich. I mean, with a name like the gambler, you could either be rich or you could be poor. Apparently he's rich. <laughs> and then she, um, you know, she, she hacked into his, into his bank accounts. She took all the money out of his bank accounts and she donated all of his money to charity. So he immediately starts freaking out. <laughs> and then, you know, and just like anyone would, he, he was like, to hell with this plan for, ev for evil domination. <laughs> he went on the computer to try to save his money, Scrooge McDuck style. And while he was trying to salvage his funds, Chuck was able to, to, to hack into the blockers and he turned the, um, he turned the mind control blockers back on. So now Shining Knight is back to normal and um, Pat is back to normal. You know, Pat told Courtney, he was like, yo, I heard what you said. Don't, no, no, no take backs. And then, you know, then, then they all, they all went after, went after the, um, the bad guys. So the gambler was just like, yo, they got into the system. And he told, uh, he told Icicle, he was like, yo, like send, send in the troops. So, you know, so now they're, they're all in, um, they're all in, um, Dragon King's lair. It's, um, it's Courtney, it's Pat, it's Yolanda, Shining Knight, and it's, um, and it's Rick. And then Tiger shows up, Sportsmaster shows up, um, Icicle was there, um, one more person was there who I can't remember off the top of my head. And then um, your boy, the gambler, he let Solomon Grundy out of the cage. So I'm like, all right, so, <laughs> so we doing this. So like this, the, the ISA versus the JSA happens like a big battle and nobody mentioned like Tigris and Sportsmaster. And I like to this point, nobody knows the fiddler is dead. <laughs> like, like keep, keep in mind while we're doing all this, nobody knows the fiddler is dead. So you know, so everybody's fighting. The Shining Knight is fighting Dragon King because remember he was supposed to slay the dragon. And then while he was fighting Dragon King, you know, he took his sword. You know, he went to cut him, and then Dragon King moved, and then he sliced the door. And then after he sliced the door, the two of them were like rustling and fell over. And then they showed the sliced door. And as soon as they showed like the broken door, you just saw like this female hand grab the door. And I was like, oh shit, <laughs> I forgot about Cindy. <laughs> I forgot. Cindy has been in that room for like three weeks. <laughs> so the you know so then when uh, when Dragon King had the drop on um on Shining Knight and he was about to kill Shining Knight, um Cindy came out of nowhere. She stabbed her father in the back, and then she was like, "That's for that's for leaving me locked up in a room for three weeks." So Dragon King he did, and then Cindy for some reason. Now you would think at this point. Because Cindy has been controlled by her dad for so long, you would think that because she has been, she hasn't been getting the love that she needed from her parents. You know, the fact that her mom died. You know, you would think that she would just be over the whole thing, and she would just be like, "All right, you know, my dad's dead. Maybe it's time that I clean up my act, and you know, then try to like, you know, build a life for myself, you know, outside of my father." Nope. She immediately busted out the the Wolverine claws, and she was like, "I'm coming. For, I'm about to skin. I'm about to cut some skin off Star Girl's ass." She immediately goes after Courtney. She starts fighting Courtney, and then while her and Courtney are fighting. Yolanda ended up being like the one person who was like left alone because they knocked out Tigris, they knocked out Sportsmaster, like I said, Dragon King died, and then Icicle ended up leaving the fight because the gambler was like, look, Beth is, is getting into the system. He was like, damn the fight, because if Beth gets into the system, this whole plan is a wrap. So Icicle was like, all right, I'm going to go roll up on Beth, I'm going to let everybody else handle that. Solomon, Solomon Grundy ended up fighting Pat in the robot. And then, because Rick, Rick actually tried to take a swing at Grundy, because remember, Grundy killed his parents. Rick went after Grundy. Grundy knocked Rick across the room, and then Pat took over. So Pat was fighting Grundy. Yolanda didn't have anything to do once Tigris of them got taken out. So Courtney told Yolanda, she was like, yo, just go on without us. Go destroy the machine, because the goal is to destroy the machine. 
before they even got to that point, there was a moment where Rick was talking to Yolanda and he told Yolanda, he said, you know, he told her, he told the dead ass, he was like, yo, once we stop the machine and blow up the machine, I'm going back into the tunnel. I'm going to find Solomon Grundy and I'm going to kill him. And then Yolanda was just like, oh, but killing is wrong, you know. And then he was just like, oh, he was like, oh, did God tell you that? And then she was just like, yeah, she was like, you know, like killing is wrong. And then he was just like, well, then God shouldn't have allowed my parents to die. And I'm just like, bro, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> you know, it's more like free, like free will. free. And it's like it's like free will. Like people can do what people have the free will to do what they want. And just because he killed your parents doesn't mean it was right either. <laughs> because it's, it's almost like Yolanda's statement was still justified because she was just like killing is wrong. And then he was like, well, why did my parents die? I'm like, but that doesn't mean it was it wrong <laughs> so but he was hell bent on killing grundy and let's say and, and i mean you could you could understand that thought process so but here's where i have the problem now and yolanda getting on my nerves so <laughs> yolanda so because yolanda was the only person who didn't have anybody to fight courtney told her to go destroy the machine so she goes into the tunnels to find the machine um dragon king's like mind controlled minion shows up she beats all of them up and then you know then then brainwave he ends up brain brainwave <laughs> i should have mentioned this before brainwave was sitting like brainwave was sitting in a chair he was in a room and he had a device on his head broadcasting his brainwaves through the machine projecting out into the world he looked the room that he was in was basically the stage one of professor x's cerebral room like when professor x from x-men decided he was going to build cerebral and he drew the first sketch of what the room was going to look like. That was the room that Brainwave was in. It, it, it basically, like, it was such a X-Men, the, the room, the way it was positioned, the platform that, that stretched out to the middle, him putting the thing on his head. I was like, yeah, flat out ripped off the entire X-Men, like the entire X-Men situation. But anyway, it was just very funny that they did it because it was almost like they just used the same set. It wasn't even a different set. Like they were just like, well, we need a room for him to project the brain. They're like, screw it. Let's this is let's let's call Fox and use the X Men set. So you know, so Brainwave, um, you know, so he he took he took we're, we're gonna call it Cerebral. He took Cerebral off for a second. He was just like, all right, I'm gonna go kill these kids because, <laughs> because these kids is messing up the plans. So after Yolanda killed everybody, there was still one minion that was left. And then when that minion took off his hood, it was Henry. And then she was like, oh my god, Henry, like we thought you were dead. He's like, I didn't die in the cave in. And he was just like, you know, like I stole this hood and I've been secretly walking around undetected for the last couple of weeks. So then she was just, you know, then he was just like, you know, like, you know, I'm sorry for what I did. And, you know, this, that, the third, blah, blah, blah. So she was just like, so Silana, she got caught up in it. She was just like, all right, Henry. She was like, you know, she's like, come on, let's get out of here. And then, um, and then Henry was just like, yeah, let's go find your friends. And then Yolanda paused and she was like, hold up. And, you know, and she didn't even give it a second thought because, because the thing about it is towards the end of Henry's demise, he became friends with everybody. Like he befriended Courtney. Like he earned Rick's respect. Like, you know, him and Beth were cool. Like he considered them friends. So for him to tell Yolanda, let's go find your friends, that was out of character for Henry to say that at that point. And Yolanda was smart enough to know that. So she put two and two together. And then she took her she immediately took her claws and she sliced his throat. And then after she sliced his throat, the illusion went away. And then we saw that it was brainwave pretending putting putting a mental illusion over himself to pretend to be his son to fool yolanda but yolanda didn't fall for it and she sliced his throat and then he hit the ground and you know he hit the ground he was bleeding from the throat and then yolanda looked at him and then she was just like i watched henry die and now i'm gonna watch you die you son of a bitch and then i'm just like did you not just give him that i'm like did you not just give rick the killing is wrong like you literally 10 minutes ago, just gave him an entire speech about how killing is wrong. And then you just cut this man's Adam's apple and didn't even get that shit a second thought. I got issues with you. <laughs> Yolanda has been the most wishy-washiest character throughout the entire season. She, she is notorious for saying one thing and doing the complete opposite. But I digress. So anyway... So, um, so now, so then, so court, so Courtney fighting Cindy and then Courtney was just like, look, I ain't got, then, then, um, and then, oh, then Icicle, Icicle rolled up on Barbara, <laughs> you know, like he was in the room. And then, um, you know, a after that, like Courtney ended up, um, she was just like, look, I ain't got time for this BS. She blasted Cindy across the room. Cindy was knocked out. And then, you know, then Yolanda and Courtney, like they went, they went after the machine. Courtney got on the staff. The staff blew up the machine. 
the machine is destroyed, and then all the adults got their, you know, ended up ended up snapping out of it, and all the adults, you know, like got their um got got their mind got their minds back. And then after the machine was broke, the gambler was like, "Yo, I'm out." <laughs> he was just like, "Look," he was like, "I ain't riding for the cause. I'm not gonna help y'all fight these people." They destroyed the satellite. Fuck it, I'm out. <laughs> and the gambler just dipped, and you never saw the gambler again. So him and his cat. So, <laughs> so, so after the machine was destroyed, after the machine was destroyed, unfortunately, the teacher who was on the football field, you know, like he, like he, um, he passed away. Like he died because he actually, he for some reason, he was the only person who was actually trying to resist the <laughs> trying to resist the whole process. Um, and then, like you know, then like after 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 all the parents woke up or whatever. You know, then the, the the world was presumably <laughs> was presumably saved. But then Barbara woke up, and then after Barbara woke up, um, Icicle rolled up on him, and then Icicle was just like he, he was too late by that point. But he took his ice powers, he used them on on the goggles, and he destroyed Chuck, and Chuck gone now. So Chuck's gone. Beth was so devastated, she actually tried to attack him, and I was like, "Can somebody please get this girl?" And then Icicle blasted Beth clear across the room. Beth was knocked out, and then Icicle snatched up Barbara and took her to the roof. You know, Beth. You know, then um, then Yolanda, Yolanda and Courtney, they showed up. Beth was just sitting like Barbara has just been taken. Beth was just sitting on the floor with the damn goggles in her hand, crying over the fact that Chuck is gone, and I'm just like. You're like a kid with an imaginary friend at this point. <laughs> like, I understand Chuck was your friend, but you got to let that go. Like, you actually have real, fr like, actual real friends. Chuck is a machine. You can fix him. So, you know, <laughs> she told him that um, that Icicle, they, they rolled up on your mom, took your mom upstairs. Icicle took Beth, um, Icicle took Barbara to the roof. And then he told Barbara, he was just like, you know, you know, like, like, be, be, be my wife or whatever, like, be with me, we'll change the world. And then she was like, she was like, you crazy. And then she, you know, he was just like, you know, it's this world that took my wife from me. And then she was just like, then, then Barbara was like, your wife would be ashamed to see what's happened to you. And he was like, don't tell me what my wife would have wanted. And I'm like, he kind of got a point because when his wife was on her deathbed and she was about to, she was about to like, you know, like kick the bucket. Her last words to Icicle was, get revenge for me. And I was just like, oh, gosh. <laughs> so, yeah, like, his wife wasn't the best <laughs> wasn't the best person either. And then, you know, Barbara was about to, um, was like, then, then after Barbara was like, you're crazy, I'll never join you, um, Icicle was going to throw her off the roof. And then Pat showed up, you know, because Solomon Grundy had basically destroyed um, the robot. And after he destroyed the robot, you know, he was actually about to kill Pat. And then Rick showed up. Rick, Rick, Rick came back, knocked Grundy clear across the room. And then he told Pat, he was like, yo, go save your wife. And then Pat, and then Pat kind of paused for a second because Pat was just like, yeah, but Icicles got her and the robots destroyed. And Rick was like, Pat, you don't need the damn robot. Go save your wife. And I was just like, bro, like, like the fact that Pat hesitated, I was just like, I I'm actually with Rick. And the fact that Rick had to tell Pat that, I was just like, come on, dude. Like, you ain't get hit that hard. And then Rick ended up um, beating the living hell out of Grundy. Like, he beat the crap out of Grundy to the point where Grundy was actually, like, sniveling and, like, begging for mercy. Rick picked up a gigantic rock, and he was about to crush Grundy with the rock. And then Grundy was like, no. And then Rick felt bad. And I was, and Rick was just like, Rick, Rick got mad because he was, because the thing about it is, when you're bloodthirsty looking for revenge, when you're when you're when you're when you're hocked up on emotion and you want emotional revenge, it's only satisfying to get that emotional revenge if the person that you're inflicting it on is still an evil douchebag to the bitter end, because then you won't feel bad based on what you're about to do because you know this person ain't shit. But because Grundy was actually sniveling, he was like crying, and he was like, "No, please don't hurt Grundy." It's just like, well, now I feel bad, <laughs> you know, because like, you know, it's like I can't, it's like I can't hit you now, you know, because like you know, you're just like yeah, you're like crying and shit. <laughs> so, so Rick felt bad, and then he was just like, he was like, you know, he was just like, get out of here and don't ever come back. I don't ever want to see you again. And then I was, just, you know, and then part of me, there was a part of me that was just like, all right, I feel you, Rick. You did the right thing. You didn't kill him, but for, like, but for you to be like, get out of here and never come back again. I'm like, dude, it's fucking Grundy. Like, where's he going to go? 
<laughs> like he just was like like Rick did the most responsible and irresponsible thing in in one motion. He, you know, he's he spared he spared someone's life, but then was just like, go on, get out of here, you eight foot, nine foot tall monster. Go out into the world and just walk around. <laughs> like I'm just like, bro, like you just can't let him leave. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> the choices, the choices that were made in this episode. <laughs> so then, uh, so, so then, so now Pat, so Pat went to go save his wife. She's on the roof. And then even Icicle was like, yo, you came up here to defend your wife's honor. He was like, bro, you ain't got no superpowers. You ain't got no robot. What you going to do? And then, and then, and then Pat was like, I got a daughter though. And then Stargirl came out of nowhere, kicked Icicle in the back. Her and Icicle started fighting. Um, you know, they, um, you know, he tried to, he grabbed her staff and tried to freeze the staff, but the the staff used its power to, you know, to like, to to unfreeze it. And then it basically caused an explosion. It knocked Barbara off the roof and then Pat caught her. It knocked Courtney off the roof and then Yolanda caught her. And then Icicle basically just fell and he hit the floor. His entire body was full of ice. But then when he hit the floor, like part of it cracked, like some of his body cracked and like, you know, some of the ice broke off of his face. And then when he was in the street and he was just like, you'll never stop my evil plans. And he tried to use the ice. Mike of all people, <laughs> like Pat's son of all people, driving his dad's car, came out of nowhere with the damn dog and just ran Icicle over and shattered him into a million pieces. And I'm like, do you realize Pat's son just killed a man? Wow. And then he's just like, does this mean I get to be in the JSA? And I'm just like, bro, you just committed flat out murder. <laughs> and nobody's going to address that. <laughs> you know, like it was supposed like the, the way this scene took place, it was supposed to come across as a comedic moment. But I'm just like, this 10 year old boy just killed a man. So, <laughs> so and then after that, um, that was it. The machine was destroyed. Um, the J, the ISA was killed, and uh, yeah. Um, so here are my issues with this whole thing. It was a good episode. I enjoyed the episode. Here are the problems. The problem that I have with the episode is the amount of questions that were the the things that were left on the table. The amount of questions that went unanswered. And it's not like a normal television show thing where you watch a TV show and you're like, oh, we didn't get that resolved. Maybe it'll get resolved in the next season. No, like these are things that actually need answers. Like these are, these are, th you can't gloss over these things. So number one, and I'm just going to come right out and say this one. Do we not, <laughs> like, does, is no one going to tell the fiddler's son that his mama dead because it's been a complete 24 hours at this point his son just basically smacked fire out of somebody his mom has been dead for a day and it wasn't even on the news where they were just like oh local principal of blue valley high you didn't see the son's reaction to the mom being dead why icicle jr wasn't even in this episode your dad just got shattered into a million pieces. Icicle is dead. The you know the after after they save the day, the episode takes place six weeks later. Nobody was talking was talking to these kids. Like Icicle Junior was just like, up oh, up, oh, my dad dead, and there wasn't even a scene of Icicle Junior seeing his dad in a million pieces, being hurt. It's like I don't know if this kid is upset as far as like trying to be a villain now i don't know if he's just gonna like wallow in self-pity we have no idea what's gonna happen they never they never talked about it problem three you done busted cindy's ass and then you just left cindy lying on the ground so after you destroyed the machine and after you saved the day no one was gonna go back into the tunnel no one was gonna call the authorities the feds didn't get involved like no one outside of blue valley no authority figure outside of blue valley came in to do cleanup we just going we're just gonna leave the tunnels here with the <laughs> with all of them with all of dragon king's experiments and all these brainwashed dead bodies uh tigress and sportsmaster are they not going to prison <laughs> like so you just beat up you beat up tigress and sportsmaster and what you just left them on the floor are we not going after the gambler? Like, I don't understand, like, the fallout of the, like, 
they basically just left Cindy in the tunnel and everybody went home. And the problem is in Blue Valley, everybody lives in the same neighborhood. So what happened? So Cindy, Tigress, and Sportsmaster, they just woke up and they're just like, wow, that JSA sure kicked our ass. And then they just went home. So then the next morning, Courtney, Courtney leaves the house to go to school. And then she just sees Tigress and Sportsmaster sitting on the front porch talking about, we'll get you next time, Stargirl. I'm like, what is happening to these people? Like, what are the consequences for these people? What are we doing? <laughs> like, what are we doing? My, another problem that I have. Do Yolanda's parents think she was just upstairs this whole time? Because in, in the Wildcat episode, her parents made it abundantly clear. She was supposed to go to school and then come straight home and then go to her room. She has the worst parents of all time. We've been over that. Ever since that whole episode, we never saw her parents again. And Yolanda has been consistently out of the house fighting crime. Yolanda is flat out fighting crime during the day and at nighttime. Do her parents honestly think she was in this room, her, in her room the entire time? When the brainwashing happened, because Yolanda has a little brother, I'm pretty sure there was a moment where her parents were mind controlled and her little brother was like, oh, mommy, papi, what's going on? Did he not go upstairs to be like, Yolanda, something's wrong. Oh, wait, Yolanda's not in her room. When her parents came out of the trance, did her parents not go upstairs to check on her? Where do they think, like, do they re it's been like like the wildcat episode was episode four for the past nine episodes do they honestly think this child has been in her room this entire time i have a problem with this <laughs> i have a huge problem with this brainwave dead it, there's no is anyone going to clean up his body like ah, <laughs> ah so and even and even artemis um are her if 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 artemis's parents are in jail does she know her parents are in jail? Is she aware that her parents are villains now? Did her parents come home in their super villain costumes? She's like, mom, dad, what's... Like, the fact that we didn't get any scenes, the fact that there were no scenes pertaining to all this, what happened to Beth's parents? <laughs> like, like, Beth's parents didn't show up. Because the thing is, with a show like, with a show like this, it can't be a situation where you just allow these children to do whatever it is that they're going to do. And it's not important if you show the parents. These are high school kids. Their parents need to be presently active as far as what's happening. And that is the problem that, <laughs> that's the problem that I had with, with this final episode. So anyway, so now moving on. <laughs> so the shiny knight, he ends up leaving. He goes to look for his horse. Yolanda's still struggling with the fact that she killed a man. She's, you know, looking at the bleachers. They're all at school. No other kids are at the school. So I don't know what happened. The government, they said that the government said it was an earthquake, you know, that, um, you know, that destroyed like a satellite or something. I'm like, okay, that's fine. You can tell, like, you can come up with that lie for the rest of the world. But what does the actual residents of blue valley <laughs> like like think like think of all this like nobody's walking around like yo like there were no kids walking around like yo that wasn't no earthquake like something wrong like the teacher died the one of the teachers and the principal is dead and nobody said anything cindy has no parents now how is she gonna pay the mortgage how is she, how is she gonna how is she gonna buy food but um <clears throat> They did show a scene where Cindy, in the end, she ended up going into, like, I guess, like her dad's closet or like her dad's archives. And then when she went into the archives or whatever, she found um, like a little crystal. And then when she picked up the crystal, I forgot the name. Like, there's someone in the crystal. I forgot the name of the, um, I, I should have wrote it down. She said the name of the person who's in the crystal because she looked and she was like, I see you in there. And then the guy in the crystal started laughing. So whoever's in that crystal. So basically, Cindy about to take over and whoever's in the crystal is going to help her. Um, then they show when they were doing the news report about how there was an earthquake or whatever, there was one member of the, of the ISA who was on that painting who wasn't involved in all this. And then they showed him and they were, he was just like, see, I told Icicle that this plan wouldn't work. And then you saw the black smoke and I was like, the shade, I was like, we got my man shade. So shade is coming in season two. I love the shade character, so I'm down for that. Like I want to, like I want all the shade. Like I want all the smoke. I want all, <laughs> I want all the smoke. So, 
So you got you got you got Sheev, Cindy, you got Cindy, and then you got Shade coming for um, for season two. I don't know where Gr Grundy just walking around the forest doing God knows what, and the gambler is still around. The gambler basically just went home to have dinner and just like nobody gonna say anything about that. <laughs> and then and then you know and then finally, so again, like the episode takes place six six weeks six weeks later after after that. And again, you know, nothing was resolved, nothing was talked about. And, you know, Courtney gave Pat the um, the greatest, the world's greatest dad mug that she was going to give to her actual daddy. The two of them embraced and they hugged. Um, Yolanda was at Courtney's house for Christmas and I thought she wasn't allowed out of the house. <laughs> that never got addressed. Um, and then, and then the, you know, then Courtney, she put on the Stargirl costume. She was flying around the city, you know, with her and Pat or whatever. And then in the final scene, which was kind of cool, they went to Courtney's original. They went to um, I don't know if it was Courtney or Pat's, but they they went to some. I think it was Pat. They went to Pat's. Yeah, you know, it had to be. It had to be Pat. They went to Pat's old house. We were back in California, and then somebody knocked at the door at Pat's old house before he moved to Blue Valley. The guy opened the door, and then he was just like, "Oh, can I help you?" And he was just like, "Yeah, I'm looking for Pat Dugan." And then um, you know, he was just like, "Well, he doesn't live here anymore. He moved to Blue Valley. Who are you?" And then he was just like, "I'm Starman." You know, so the original. So now the original star, unless this is a clone. A brainwashed person or somebody that can um you know can 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 change form the original star man is apparently alive and that doesn't make any sense because pat was with star man in the forest when he died so when star man actually died in the forest with pat i'm going to assume pat took his body and brought it to a coroner i assume there was an autopsy done i assume they had a funeral for this man i i i refuse to think Starman just passed out and then Pat just left him lying in the forest and thought he, you know, and, and Starman was in a coma this whole time. Then he wakes up out of the coma like five, ten years later. He's just like, oh, my God, what happened? You know, blah, blah, blah. I'm pretty sure Pat actually buried this man <laughs> because to tell me that when he died in the in, in, in the pilot, the fact that if you're going to tell me Pat just left him in the like someone needs to explain to me what happened the moment Starman gave Pat the staff and passed away up until he woke up. But at least that's something I hope we'll get a, we'll get us we'll get a story for in in season 2. Hopefully, hopefully if they go the whole season 2 and don't explain that gap, I'm going to be really mad because if Pat was under the impression that they buried this man, that's not the real Starman. But it was cool to actually see Starman. And that's how that's how the episode ended. Um <clears throat> Based on my rant, you can tell what 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 my hopes and my predictions are for next season. There's just so much stuff left on the table that just doesn't make sense. But I still enjoyed it. So thank you for tuning in. That was the Star Girl um, season one in the books, which was which was dope. I you know I I knew I would like the show because I said I'm a huge DC fan and I know about the characters. I ended up liking Star Girl way more than I thought I would. My only thing. All, all ranting aside, my only thing is next season, can we please give Beth a new costume? So let me know, let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments. Um, what did you think of my rant about the thing about the things that went unanswered? Um, let me know who your let me know who your favorite character was throughout the entire season. Um, for me, the MVP of the season, I have to agree with my homegirl Jessen King. Follow her YouTube channel. I have to agree with her. I gotta put respect on Pat's name because throughout the whole season, Pat held it down. Pat kept it together. You know, he was a father. He was a husband. He was working. He was a mentor. He got so much disrespect from everybody in his entire family. He, I'm talking about like Black Lightning, Jefferson Pierce levels of disrespect. And if you watch Black Lightning, you know how his family treats him. <laughs> he got Jefferson Pierce type disrespect. And Pat held it together. You know, he whooped Courtney's dad's ass, you know, like a man. Like, he, def he he went after Icicle to defend his wife. I ain't got nothing bad to say about Pat. Pat's the MVP of this season, and I put the ultimate respect on that boy's name. Um, but let me know what you think. Let me know who your MVP is. Um, you know, let me know your predictions for season two. You know, let me know if we're actually going to get a resolution to any of these questions. And hopefully when season two comes out, we will. So, again, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for everyone who left comments throughout the course of me reviewing Stargirl. I enjoyed it. I loved it. And I will be here for season two. One more season finale to go. My Doom Patrol season finale video is already on the channel. And then after that, 
we have um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. wraps up on Wednesday. And then, you know, like I said, then hopefully Titans will start sooner than we can keep the reviews going. So thank you for tuning in as always. Leave a comment, like and or subscribe. Check me out on social media. Love you all. And for Stargirl, for season one until season two. Take care, guys. And I'm out this bitch.